constructed. So this is the best paper, right, of uh, this year's Sigma. So I'm really excited about like surf. And you've heard a bit about uh, what the paper is about during the award session. So I'm not going to repeat any of that. Let's just go. I'm going to stand here. <laughs> Thank you, Holger. And everyone, welcome to my talk. So in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to share with you a new data structure we built that can speed up the range queries in your databases with a very small cost in memory footprint. And we call this data structure SURF, which is short for succinct range filters. This is a joint work between CMU, TUM, Intel Labs, and HP Labs. So what is a filter? A filter answers approximate membership queries. The word approximate here means that the membership test can be wrong, but the error is guaranteed to be one-sided. So for example, suppose we have a filter on billionaires. So if you query someone within the set, like Larry Allison here, the filter will say yes, absolutely, with no chance for a false negative. But if you query someone who dreams about being in the set, like my colleague Andy Pavlo here, <laughs> the filter will say, nah, you must be kidding, with a high probability, but it's not guaranteed. There's a small chance that the filter actually believes that Andy Pavlo is a billionaire, which is not true yet. And this 1% is called the false positive rate. Filters are very useful in guarding slow devices such as disks and networks. When queries enter the system, you don't want all of them to go straight to the slow devices to find answers because slow devices, they have high latency and limited bandwidth. Instead, we filter the queries first. We only let the Larry Allison queries to go through and reject all the Andy Pavlo queries. So because of the one-sided error property, once the filter in your local memory rejects a query, you can save the trip to the slow device because you're guaranteed to find empty result there. Now, a well-known weakness of existing filters that we are familiar with, like Bloom filters, quotient filters, and cuckoo filters, is that they can only support point filtering. It means that you must provide a complete key to the filter. Therefore, these filters can, can only benefit point queries, such as, is there a billionaire whose last name is Pavlo? What we try to solve in this paper is called the range filtering problem. It says that, what if we can only provide you a partial key or a key range? Can you still tell me whether there exists a key within this range? So a range filter is more powerful because it can speed up not only the point queries on the left, but also range queries such as, is there a billionaire whose last name starts with PAV? But unfortunately, when you start looking for a range filter for your database, you'll be disappointed because there are few practical solutions out there. And that is exactly what we attempt to solve in this paper. Our solution is called SURF. To the best of our knowledge, SURF is the first practical and general purpose range filter. It supports filtering both point and range queries for any variable length keys. SURF is very small. It uses succinct encoding to achieve space that is close to the theoretic minimum. For example, for 64-bit integer keys, a surf only requires around 12 bits per key to achieve a 1% false positive rate. Meanwhile, surf maintains high performance that is comparable to the fastest tree implementations. In this example, a surf that contains 10 million 64-bit integer keys can perform queries in around 200 nanoseconds per query. Finally, SURF is very useful. When we integrate SURF into RocksDB, we observe a speed up in range queries by up to 5x due to the number of IOs we saved. Now I'm going to give you a quick tour on how SURF is built. Our starting point is a complete try. Now a try is a very popular index data structure. So here in this try, we've stored SIGKDD, SIGMOD, and SIGOPS. And of course, SIGMOD is at the center because we are cool people. <laughs> now, a try can support both point and range queries because it's order preserving. 
but is a complete try a good filter? The answer is no, because it's way too big. Now, a typical blue filter configuration only requires 10 to 18 bits per key. And that's the level of space consumption we are talking about here. And this is also why it is a bad idea to directly use an index to do filtering. Our first attempt to make the data structure smaller is to truncate the try. Basically, instead of storing the full keys, we only store the unique key prefixes. For example, here, instead of sigmod, we only store sigm. Now, this truncation saves a lot of space, but it also introduces false positives. For example, in this truncated try, we can no longer distinguish between sigmod and sigmetrics. So to compensate for this lost accuracy, we add back a few suffix bits to each key prefix to make it more distinguishable. So here, we introduce two types of suffix bits, the hash suffix bits and the real suffix bits. Now, we obtain the hash suffix bits by first taking the hash of the full key and then extracts a few suffix bits out of it as the key's fingerprint. We can then use this fingerprint to reject false queries. For example, when the sig metrics query reaches the leaf node, we compute its hash and compare it to the stored hash bits. And there's a high probability that we'll find a mismatch there. Now, the real suffix bits, on the other hand, extracts bits from the real key instead of its hash. So for example, here, once we store an extra O under M, we can also reject the sig metrics query. Now, there are trade-offs between using hash suffix bits and real suffix bits. Hash suffix bits are more distinguishable because hash bits are uniformly distributed. So adding one hash bit per key guarantees to cut the false positive rate by half. So our empirical results show that a surf only requires two to four hash bits to achieve a 1% false positive rate. But the downside of using hash suffix bits is that they can't help range queries. Now, note that a false positive for a range query can only happen at the boundary keys. Now, because hash bits do not preserve orders, we can't use them to determine whether a particular key is on the left or right of the boundary key. The real suffix bits, however, can benefit both point and range queries because they preserve orders. But they have weaker distinguishability because, because of the distribution correlation between the existing keys and the querying keys. So for example, suppose you have a filter that stores email strings. Now, it is more likely that your query is also in the email format rather than, say, a, a random integer. So in Surf, we support mixing both types of suffix bits so that you can easily tune the filter according to your workload to achieve your target false positive rate. And just like in the Bloom filter, the more bits you use, the lower false positive rate you'll get. Okay, now our data structure looks more and more like a filter now, but we're far from done yet because this is still way too big. So to further reduce its size, we borrow some ideas from the theory community. There's a family of data structures called the succinct data structures. A succinct data structure is a data structure that uses amount of space that is close to the information theoretic lower bound, but still allows efficient query operations. So what differentiates a succinct data structure from other compression techniques is that it not only achieves optimal space, but also allows efficient queries directly on the encoded data structure. So we leveraged the concept and the techniques from succinct data structures and developed our own efficient succinct encoding of the truncated try. Now, it's a pity that I don't have enough time here to share with you the details of this magic encoding. So all the fascinating stuff is included in the paper. The takeaway here is that our succinct encoding of the truncated try, which is basically surf without suffix, can achieve around 10 bits per key for 64-bit integers and around 14 bits per key for the longer email strings. Now, this is at least an order of magnitude smaller than a regular index. Meanwhile, we maintain surf is well-engineered to, to match the performance of those 
state-of-the-art pointer-based trees, such as in-memory B trees and the adaptive Radix trees. To show how Surf can benefit real systems, we integrated Surf into RocksDB. Now, RocksDB is a popular storage engine implemented by using log structure merge trees. So here, at each level, the keys are globally sorted, and they are stored in SS tables. Each SS table maintains a blue filter to speed up point queries. Now, for example, suppose we have a point query get 16. Now, instead of going to the disk, we can refer to the cached Bloom filters in memory to find out that this is a false query. And in this way, we have saved unnecessary IOs. Now, the problem with Bloom filter is that they can't help range queries. Suppose we have a range query seek 14 and 18. So basically, we want the smallest item between 14 and 18 if there exists one. Now, without a range filter, we have to read all the relevant SS table blocks from disks just to find out that this is a false query. And by then, we have already wasted several expensive random IOs. So what we did is to replace the Bloom filters in RocksDB with our serves and change the execution paths for the range queries to use the serves to save IOs. Now, once the serves are cached in memory, both point and range queries can refer to the corresponding serves to reject most false queries in advance without even touching the disk. To evaluate how serf works on RocksDB, we use a time series benchmark. This benchmark simulates 2,000 distributed sensors to record events. Each event, the occurrence of each event follows a Poisson distribution. The key in each record is a 64-bit timestamp followed by a 64-bit sensor ID. The value is a one kilobyte payload. The queries under test are gets and close range seeks. Basically, the seek query provides a time range and asks for the first event happened during this period if there exists one. The data set is around 100 gigabyte and is stored in RocksDB on SSD. The DRAM available for the system to use is 32 gigabyte. Now, note that we are pretty generous here on the DRAM size, which is actually against us because filters work the best when the memory to storage ratio is low. In this experiment, we created two RocksDB instances with different filter options. We compare a 4-bit real suffix surf against a 14-bit Bloom filter because they are roughly the same size. This is the graph for uh, the throughput for, for the point queries. Now, because we randomly generated the querying timestamp, almost all the queries are false. In this case, actually we can see using serfs is actually slower than using Bloom filters. Now this is because we this is because we hold the const hold the filter size constant here. Now a four bit uh, suffix, a four-bit real suffix surf has a high, higher false positive rate than a 14-bit Bloom filter. So this performance gap can be erased by simply adding a few more suffix bits per key to the serves. And of course, if there are fewer false queries, this performance gap also shrinks. But what we want to emphasize here is that if your workload is point queries only or point queries dominant, we don't recommend replacing your Bloom filters with serfs. Because what really makes serfs awesome is its ability to filter range queries. So this graph, on this graph, the x-axis is the percentage of range queries with empty results. Basically, we control this percentage by varying the length of the time range. The y-axis is throughput. Now we can see that as more and more queries return false, RocksDB's performance increases by up to 5x when using serfs because serfs can help avoid unnecessary IOs for range queries. And this benefit comes with almost negligible overhead in terms of CPU usage, memory footprint, and storage size. So next time, when you think about using a filter to speed up your range queries, now you know where to go. 
surface source code is publicly available on GitHub under the Apache license. You are welcome to download and use it. We also have a cool demo website where you can co configure your keys and uh, configurations to visually see how Surf works. Now, our hope is that Surf can make real impact on building systems and databases, and we need your feedback to make Surf better and better. Thank you very much. We have lots of time Thank for you. questions. Uh, please come up to the mic. So we have, a, we have two. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Currently, I have uh, questions about do you, uh, are, are you uh, currently considering only one dimensional range query? Yes. Okay. So, per, uh, per filter, yes. Yeah. Do, do you think is it possible to extend it to multi dimensional uh, range queries? The, you can, you can do that by building a composite key, right? When you have two columns, you, you, compo you compose the keys in, into one key and store it in the filter. Mm. Does that answer your question? Or if you yeah, really so. mean multi-dimension, then you need multiple filters. Huh. Each filter is, in, is responsible for one dimension. Uh. Okay. Uh, maybe we can discuss offline. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. In the meantime, I, I wanted to ask one thing. Do you think there is you could extend this to say regular expressions? Uh, this must be something that like you know must have crossed your mind. Though. Regular expressions. It it works for any kind of strings, right? No, no. Well, for prefixes, right? For prefixes, yeah, yeah, yes. Like, imagine you have like something. I mean, having only a prefix and a suffix again, you can do. But like you know, imagine something. If you have like a, basically, if, 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 when, you, when you look at this data structure, this is basically a, a tree data structure, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So actually in the interface, we implemented like iterators that you can iterate the tree. So whatever basically an index can do, right. this thing can do. Yeah. There are some functionalities I didn't mention in, in, the, in the talk, which, which, which is like we can do a range count, actually. When you provide a range, we can not only tell you whether there exists a key, we can tell you how many. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting work, very impressive Thank you. talk. Yeah, so uh, just want to mention there is one paper from SODA 2015 okay. uh, titled uh, Approximate Range Emptiness in Constant yes, Time. Yes, I'm aware of that. You're aware of that, right? Yeah. So it's by the author of the Cuckoo Hashing. Rasmus Pa. Yeah. So what's the difference between this work and that work? That work? Okay. This works. Yeah. That is in theory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, that answers uh, my question. Thank you. And, okay. To, to extend the, the answer is uh, they actually provided a nice bound for this range emptiness problem. And the reason we didn't uh, compare our space consumption to, to their bound is that actually this is one of the limitation of our work is that when, especially for range queries, when you use real suffixes, we don't have a theoretic bound for any workload uh, for, for the number of bits you use and the false positive rate. Unlike Bloom filters, you have a math table for that, right? We don't have that because the shape of the try is dependent on the workload. The, the key distribution. So all our results, take it, take yeah, just all, all our experiment results are, are empirical now. So, but on, only with the hash suffix bits, we have some theoretical guarantee, but no more. Uh, okay, yeah, so actually, th at the beginning with, with the problem is a like query, right? The yes. Like if you have the pattern match, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. So for the like query, if you start the prefix, it can fit the tree really nicely. But what if the pattern is matching the end? Uh, okay, that's and then in the middle. So that's a bit uh, like the regular expression. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think surf can no, but do that. Suffixes are easy, right? Suffixes. You can do suffixes just the way you do prefixes. Yeah, in that's true. Middle. That's true. Middle, that's true. Tricky, yes. Right? Any regular expression is going to be tricky. Yes. That needs some more theorist thinking. Right. All right, yeah. next oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Again. Thank you very much.